If IHOP was open for indoor dining right now, I would totally just be loading up on a bunch of steak and eggs because science says that I can, right? Look, it has to be at the right time though. This is gonna be three times to have more protein and three times to have less protein because it's not all just a free for all where protein is good so you can have it whenever you want. Let's break it down. Do go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and then please hit that little bell icon in the bottom corner there so you never ever miss a beat. If you want to check out Thrive Market down below in the description, I did put a link there and I've created specific like hormone boxes, thyroid boxes, they're all like uh, grocery boxes, things that I would recommend that you get at the grocery store, but you can get them through Thrive Market, which is an online membership-based grocery store. So they're a big supporter, a big sponsor of this channel. I greatly, greatly appreciate all they do for this channel. So if you wanna check them out down below in the description, please do so after this video and you can get the grocery bundles that I recommend. Again, it's like going grocery shopping with me. So highly, highly recommend it. They're super awesome, cheaper than a lot of grocery stores in many cases. So check them out afterwards. Number one first time to have more protein is actually gonna be with breakfast. And I know you wanna turn off this video now because you're like, oh, here we go, basic information. But there's actually some really cool stuff and I'll drop a little science bomb on you. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition actually took a look at literally a beef and egg breakfast, which would ultimately be steak and eggs, right? Versus cereal. I think we know what the outcome is gonna be here, but there's a cool scientific twist to this. Okay, yes, lower levels of blood sugar. So yes, there was more satiation throughout the day with the protein group, with the steak and eggs group. But there was also an increase in something called peptide YY. Don't turn off the video yet, I'll keep it simple. Peptide YY is a lot like leptin. And what that means is it binds to a receptor in the brain and signals the brain that there is enough food on hand so it revs up the metabolism. So not only do we get a more satiated feeling, but we get the potential of revving up the metabolism at a different level than just eating food. It's pretty darn cool. But the other piece that's really interesting is when they did fMRI studies, they found that the brain was much less reward driven by food if they had the beef and egg breakfast, meaning they weren't getting this light up like a Christmas tree effect on their brain every time they would eat throughout the course of the day like they would if they had the cereal. That's just a fun fact. Now, when should you have less protein if you're looking for quick energy? I hate to say it, but Protein's not gonna be the best to just give you a quick boost of energy. My dad used to say, oh, I'm, I'm feeling low on energy. I feel like I need to eat protein. And even before I knew a lot of the nutritional science that I know now, it always confused me. I thought that he was talking out of the side of his mouth. Okay, rest in peace, love my dad. I just thought it didn't make sense. Well, because it doesn't make sense. Protein takes a lot to digest. It's just not what you would get for quick energy. Look at plain and simple. If you're doing a low carb ketogenic diet, you wanna be having lower, or, if you're doing a low carb ketogenic diet or something, you wanna be having a short chain fat. You wanna be doing like an MCT oil, maybe some kind of monounsaturated fat, like maybe an olive oil or an avocado oil to get a quick burst of energy. If you're not doing a ketogenic diet, you wanna go for a moderate glycemic carbohydrate for a quick burst of energy. I'm not saying sustained, but quick. So when you're like, hey, I feel run down, I need energy. Protein's not usually what your body's looking for. That's more of a longer term metabolic burn. When's another time that you need more protein? after a fast. This is super important whether you are in a faster or not. Okay, protein is going to be what you need because fasting breaks down protein in your body. You cannot magically build muscle during the fast. Well, there's some weird exceptions, but the point is, generally that's not the case. You wanna make sure you're allocating enough protein in your feeding window to offset how much you may have broken down during your fast. But protein is very good post-fast because you should not be having a bunch of fats. You should not be having a bunch of carbs right when you break your fast because of the insulin response and what it can do with electrolyte imbalances. There was a cool study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition again that took a look at the mitochondrial complex and it found that through any kind of hypocaloric diet where there was just less calories coming in, the only way, the underscore, only way to restore what is called the mitochondrial complex, a very important part of the electron transport chain, was to consume protein. Fats and carbohydrates did not restore that. For you biochemical nerds out there, what that simply means is that in order to actually get the mitochondria functioning again after being in a caloric deficit, it needed protein. So don't fool yourself. Carbohydrates aren't gonna do the trick there. Fats aren't even gonna do the trick there. It's protein. So then what's another scenario where you wanna have less protein? If you have stiff joints. 
Now, if you're working out a bunch, you might be stiff for different reasons, but if you just randomly have stiff joints, could just be that you have uric acid building up, okay? What happens is the excess purines that come in from consuming a bunch of meat can turn into uric acid, that forms crystals in your joints, and that can also lead to an increase in what's called the NLRP3 inflammasome, which is sort of a, a reaction within the body as far as inflammation is concerned. Cool thing is, all it takes is a couple days of reduced protein consumption, and that usually mellows out. So if you start finding yourself randomly stiff for no real reason, maybe you do need to back off the protein. It could be your way of metabolizing protein is different from someone else's, but backing off a little bit might make a difference. Okay, this next one when you should consume more protein is gonna irritate a lot of people because there's so much out there that says that when you get sick, you should really back off the protein because protein is probably what's making you sick. Not the case. Look, our immune system needs glutamine. Glutamine is a big nitrogen source for what is called the nucleotide base of our DNA. Okay, when you look at leukocytes, when you look at immune cells, when they are fighting something, they are going through rapid division like crazy, forming new immune cells, okay? Boom, 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 it's going crazy. Whenever you have this division, you need protein, you need nitrogen to form what is called a nucleotide base of the DNA, okay? The DNA allows that to build, right? It's the blueprint for the immune cells to build. If you do not have the nitrogen or the protein to support the DNA, then how do you grow new immune cells? Glutamine is so important for this. The journal Nutrients showed this in a really cool study. They flat out showed that when someone is immunocompromised and is sick, that they ultimately need more glutamine. So yes, protein when you are sick. But another study in the journal Brain, Behavior, and Immunity found that those that were doing relatively intense workouts responded very, very well to higher levels of protein. We're talking three grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Okay, that's a good amount. Okay, they found that subjects that consumed that much protein had a significantly less risk of upper respiratory tract infections Okay, if they were working out hard. Elite endurance athletes especially, or people that just work out hard, they are much more prone to URIs. They just are. Okay, we know some reasons why, but the fact is you get sick a lot more. More protein seems to help combat this a little bit. Okay, lastly, when should you be having less protein? And this is the last and final one. Going a little bit to theory land based on some newer research, but after a sauna. Right now, the studies are only in in vivo mode, but this is still really cool stuff. When you are in a sauna, you activate what are called heat shock proteins. These heat shock proteins protect the proteins in our body. They may form like a cylinder around them so that the proteins can go through their natural folding and unfolding, which is just a natural process for rebuilding. So basically, when you're in a sauna, you have a layer of protection around your proteins. But after that sauna is done, those proteins need to get rebuilt properly, right? Well, you have a level of what is called autophagy that occurs while you're in a sauna. You have autophagy that's occurring, and autophagy is essentially the cellular recycling where weaker components of cells get recycled. It's survival of the fittest, but it turns out, and the journal Autophagy published a paper that showed this, that after a sauna, we need autophagy to continue if we want heat shock proteins to continue to protect the protein. Okay, so if autophagy goes away, then we don't have the protection from the heat shock proteins anymore. We don't have, the proteins aren't protected, which means that they could denature and they could end up not functioning properly. Well, what happens when you eat? When you eat protein, you elevate mTOR, which turns off autophagy. So you're turning off autophagy at exactly the wrong time. So you may want to consider holding off for one to two hours after your sauna before having protein so you don't turn off that autophagy effect which is actually protecting the proteins with those heat shock proteins. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.